Hi and welcome back to BG Pythons. My name's Ben and this is Kavid, uh, my dream to call uh, ball python. First of all, I want to thank all of those that have subscribed um, to this channel. We managed to get over 300 subscribers, which I'm absolutely overjoyed about. It's really great to know that uh, some of you find this content um, useful. That's the primary goal of the uh, channel. This video is primarily going to be not talking about ball pythons, uh, though I thought I'd bring Covid out just to show how much he's grown since the last time he featured on one of my videos. He's now almost uh, 1500 grams, which is brilliant. He's been locking away with uh, the female dreamsicle. And so although the world doesn't need another bull python breeder, I'm going to have a bit of a stab this year with uh, these dreamsicles because it's my favorite morph. And um, I just think they're gorgeous. So watch this space. Okay, so I've, <laughs> I've put COVID back into his enclosure. Uh, what I'm going to do is, because I had previously uh, done a bit of a, a video on this topic and unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on what side of the fence you're on, the sound didn't record uh, for whatever reason. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some of the footage from that because it features the, the snakes and focus in a bit on them and uh, still talk you through the process of uh, that I did to check for parasites and pinworm. Okay, so let's see how we get on. So two, two months ago I was enjoying watching the uh, Bowdoin's pythons, well with all the snakes got, um, just crawling around their cage because they're pretty active um, and I noticed the male was acting a bit strangely and lo and behold, as you can see here, I caught the back end of him regurgitating a mouse that he'd had two days earlier. Now, that regurgitations do happen now and again. It can be from handling a bit too soon after feeding, stress, a myriad of different things could be a reason. But you know, maybe a little bit of um, substrate got in with the with the uh, the, the mouse or rat, and it sort of irritating the snake so it regurgitates. What I um, sort of at the sort of same time I, I was getting all of these uh, sort of reports about other people who'd had um, or another person that had had uh, a Bowdoin's python that was imported at the same time as mine that had been had come um, positive for pinworm. So lots of people were alerting me to this. So what I thought I'd do is I would then um, make sure I do a, a test for, for pinworm. So the steps I took was I went online uh, to parasitevet.co.uk. Uh, they they were, um, do testing for all sorts of pets. And it's a relatively straightforward um, thing to do. So if you go through, as you can see, his dog and cat fecal tests, I went for clearly the reptile tests and um, they have different levels. Uh, I've gone with the, um, the silver level, which is uh, for pinworm and cryptosporidium testing. And uh, as you can see, they've got a platinum and a gold level, different things. Um, simply set selecting buy now and you then complete some details, including your pet's name, the species. As you can see, there's quite a lot of species in there. Uh, however, Bowdoin's python aren't one of them, so I just selected other and then entered the details of the species, which it prompts you to do. Add in the age, the sex, and in my case, other than the regurgitation, I wasn't seeing any symptoms there. There's no loss of weight or loss of appetite. So um, the, in, as far as I was, I was concerned, mine 
that were pretty good. I didn't notice anything when I was quarantining in those initial few months. And so the other bit I did is I, I opted for the additional £12 for the, uh, the crypto stain. I then just added to bag and paid for it. What then happens is you get a confirmation email and it gives you some more information about what to do and they would send you a pack uh, and in that pack is a, is a plastic bag, some information that you've already provided with um, a scan code and everything for them and a small little plastic container uh, which is to put the faecal sample into and the little for a little uh, um, sort of uh, spatula just to uh, take a little section and put it into the um, this plastic capsule. This is then simply just put back into the envelope, all sealed up into the plastic and all sealed up into the envelope, stick a stamp on it and send it back to Parasite Vet. And literally within there, they, they contacted me by email as soon as they'd received it, um, which was pretty quick. And then you then receive an email with your results. And the results for me, and uh, the results, by the way, they come in and you, you uh, download from a Dropbox. And the results come in, I printed mine off and I was really pleased because I got, say, from a pinworm egg count, there was none detected. And both uh, the script, uh, crypto sporidium was negative on both counts, so no treatment required. Why this is really important for me is because I very, very nearly jumped the gun. Um, I had, had my panicure um, already and I was just going to treat them. I, and I realised that that would be the wrong approach. You shouldn't really treat any animals if they're not show if they don't have any of the either the symptoms or um, they indeed don't even have the parasites themselves because that could cause other issues. So, big thumbs up. Uh, the bonins are all pretty good right? and nothing to w um, worry about there. In fact, they're growing really, really well. I've now had two sheds. Um, from um, from each, and um, we're we're pretty pleased. They they're enjoying having the orchid bark in the in the vivs and some branches uh, to climb around. And as you can see from a nice visual here, that um, they make use of that, and even feeding from from the branch, which is just great to see. I'm, I'm loving having Bolin's pythons. I feel very privileged to have them. They're great. They're, it's good to see them. They're thriving. I would love to have some more. Um, uh, they just, you know, few and far between to, to get hold of um, at this moment in time. Again, thank you very much for subscribing. I hope elements of this were, were useful for you. One of the videos that I will be doing in the um, early part of next year, weather permitting, is a video on a, a sort of outbuilding that I'm going to construct uh, so I can have uh, an office and snake room that is a little bit um, um, more spacious than the room I'm in at the moment. I think if you remember I said previously that I wanted to um, have less but provide more. That's exactly the goal as all of the animals are getting bigger. I want to provide them with larger enclosures. So the first step was that uh, finding a, uh, a, a corner of the garden which is a bit overgrown looking a bit um, uh, like it needed a bit of a spruce up. So uh, the first phase has been clearing all of that and two skip loads later I've now got a, a five by three and a half metre space which I'm going to put a big slab down on 
and build a office stroke snake room. Um, so if that's interesting to you, make sure you subscribe, hit that bell button and uh, wish me luck on that project. And um, if I, I'm hoping to get a video out before Christmas, but if not, wishing everybody a really happy Christmas and great new year. Take care.